does restricting the right to withdraw funds help people to save more? That was the topic of a paper by Nava Ashraf and her colleagues published in the Quarterly Journal of Economics in 2006. The goal of this paper is to evaluate the effectiveness of what is called a commitment savings account. This is an account where clients commit not to withdraw funds until the account holders have reached a goal date or have achieved a certain amount of savings. There were two outcome measures of interest. One was the take-up rate, the likelihood that people would sign up for an account like this one, and two, the actual savings. The paper reported one experiment, and we'll talk about that experiment uh, in, in this module, where the goal was to test the effectiveness of the commitment savings account. It was a field experiment with, uh, which, which only used one factor, which was the type of the savings account that was used. And in particular, there were three conditions, a control condition, a marketing condition, and a treatment condition. 1,777 existing or former clients of a bank in the Philippines were randomly assigned to one of these three groups. In the control condition, participants received no face-to-face -face visits from the bank, but they were simply offered the chance to sign up for a bank account. In the marketing condition, there was a face-to-face -face meeting with a marketer who encouraged them to save and then offered them the same regular savings account that they saw in the control condition. And finally, in the treatment condition, they again met a marketer who encouraged them to save, but in this case, they were offered the commitment savings account. So the difference between the control and the marketing condition was that the bank account was held the same, but in the marketing condition, there was an actual face-to-face -face meeting. The difference between the marketing and the treatment condition was that the there was a face-to-face -face meeting for both of them, but the bank account that was offered was different across the two. Now, let's spend a minute talking about the commitment savings account. This was what was called a seed account, in which the right to withdraw funds is restricted to the holders until he or she reaches a particular goal. Keep in mind that it is the user themselves that impose the right to withdraw funds or the restriction on that right. Deposits can be made by using a locked box or an automated transfer from a primary checking or savings account. Now, in this experiment, in addition to simply looking at the take-up rate and the savings, the authors also studied personal characteristics of the participants. In particular, they looked at something called hyperbolic preference, and that was measured by asking participants to choose between an option to receive a smaller, sooner reward versus a larger later reward. So for example, those that chose the smaller sooner reward were considered to be more impulsive than those that were willing to wait for the larger later reward. Other individual characteristics collected included gender, current savings balance, income, and so on and so forth. Now, the data analysis method used to analyze these data were a regression analysis, and in particular for the choice data, uh, it used probit, which is a specific form uh, of a logit regression, uh, and for the savings data, uh, the OLS approach or the optimum least square approach uh, to regression was used. But in general, it was regression either in a probit format for the take-up rate uh, or the OLS for the savings account. Here's what they found. The take-up of the commitment savings product went up with impatience. The more impatient people were, higher the hyperbolic preference, greater was the take-up. Women were more likely to take up, as well as people who were more educated and had higher income. So in, in other words, what they found was four factors seemed to drive the take-up rate for the seed product. When it comes to the results on the savings amount, Again, keep in mind that it was analyzed by using a regression that had a constant, or in other words, the intercept, and a couple of coefficients that were significant. So one of the coefficients that was significant for the actual savings six months out was the commitment treatment. People in the commitment treatment were much more likely to save more 
uh, than people in the other conditions. And that was the case as well 12 months out. Keep in mind that while the coefficient for marketing appears to be large, it was not significant. In most papers, you will notice the use of the star to represent coefficients that are significant. If there is no star, that suggests that those coefficients were not statistically significant. So what was the conclusion? Females with hyperbolic preferences are more likely to open the commitment savings products. After 12 months, the average of savings balances for people in the treatment group increased by 81% compared to the control group. And so in fact, the commitment device does indeed help people save more.